What's up guys? This is part two of the Microsoft Surface versus Nexus 10 showdown. Now if you missed my part one video, I'm going to go ahead and leave this video up here and you can go ahead and click on it if you're on a PC or Surface tablet. Anything else, I've left that video link down below. Ouch, I know that was a little small jab. In part two, we'll be talking about displays. Now the Nexus 10 has an astonishing 2560 by 1600 resolution giving it a 300 ppi pixel density on a PLS display. Compare that to the Microsoft Surface tablet which has an IPS display with a 1366 by 768 resolution and 148 ppi. Does that even matter? We're going to find out. We're going to be looking at some applications, some web browsing and overall general feel and look. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is PPI and resolution and why does it matter or doesn't matter. I've loaded this website NissanRayShop.com. Now like most websites, this is more of a graphical intense website, meaning that it uses more graphics than it does text to display their products. Now one of the first things that you'll notice is that the Nexus 10 is zoomed in. If you saw my part one, you'll notice that that's something that it upscales the resolution. And why does that matter and how does it affect the user experience? Well, for one, and it might be very hard, I'm going to have to use my other camera to show you that the pixels or the actual display here is very fuzzy and pixelated compared to the one over here on the Surface tablet. And the reason being is that because, again, the Nexus 10 is upscaling everything compared to the Surface tablet, which is keeping everything at its normal resolution. So let's go to our school right now and learn a little bit more. So the easiest way for me to try to explain this to you is to show you a diagram of what I'm talking about. So what I've done is I've created a Nexus tablet, sort of, 2560 pixels wide by 1600 down. I've also done one over here for the Surface 1366 by 768. Now let's just say we took an image, let's just pretend this is 1024 by 768. If I were to put that image on the Surface tablet, it would look just fine. It's not going to try and do anything, it's going to keep this image at its default resolution of 1024 by 768. Now if I were to move this image or see this image on the Nexus device, because of the high pixel density what it's, or the high resolution, it's going to look probably that big. I mean, I know it's not to scale. So what's going to happen is that the Nexus is trying to upscale so that it takes up the whole entire screen. And you know what happens when you stretch an image and you zoom in. It starts to look pixelated. And that's what's happening to websites. All of the images are stretching, so that's why you get that pixelation. It's not that the display is bad, it's just that it's not optimized. That's why when you look at the Nexus 10 and some of the actual applications that are not optimized, in other words, they haven't uploaded the new logo or the new app logo, you'll notice like, for example, some of them look a little bit pixelated compared to the Google ones because they need to upload a higher resolution to kind of accommodate for that extra um, upscaling. That's the word I was looking for. Now to give you another example, here's the same website on my regular monitor that has a 1920 by 1200 resolution. Now you're probably wondering, Armando, why is Google upscaling everything? Why doesn't it just leave it alone? Because if that were the case, then this would happen. Your web experience would look something like this. Imagine this was your tablet and you would have to zoom in in order to properly look at things. So what Google is doing is basically this. So you notice as I zoom in how things look pixelated and if I keep zooming in further and further it starts to look really really pixelated. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, computer there or the screen. So the more I zoom in the more pixelated things get. However, if you notice things like text, no matter how much I zoom in, compare this right here, how pixelated this looks to something like this. This looks sharp. So this is really when you start looking at text is where you get to see the difference on a much higher PPI display. So what does this mean? Well, when you're web browsing, if you visit websites that have a lot of graphics uh, you're probably going to like the Surface tablet a lot more. Actually, you will like it because it looks a lot crisper. You don't see any of those pixelations. However, if you visit sites that have more typography and pretty much no images or very little images, then of course the Nexus 10, that's when it really shines. However, Microsoft has 
paid a lot of attention or spent a lot of money on this display. So they did a really good job considering even though it has a very or much lower PPI compared to the Nexus 10, it looks very good and I can honestly say by using it for over a month now or about a month that this is something that your eyes are not going to be straining or you're going to actually notice uh, a difference. So what does this mean for other things like applications? Well, you'll notice here that on the Microsoft Surface tablet, something that I noticed right off the bat when I first loaded both apps is it has this menu over here. And I, before this menu came across, I was able to see the door and you know a lot more compared to over here. Over here, it gets cut off. And that's something that I've noticed on most applications that, of course, that are available on both devices, how you can see a little bit more on the Microsoft Surface tablet, something just interesting to note. Now, if I were to make this menu pop up over here, unfortunately, I can't hide this menu on this side, you'll notice that things shift. So basically over here, what you're missing is what you're getting over here. So if you look at the menu on this side, how we're both the same, over here, you're missing this light, you're missing all of this over here, which you don't miss over here. Gosh, that sounds like a lot of missing. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and tap these at the same time just to kind of show you. Uh, I don't know if I did that at the same time. You can see the sector one. So you can see clearly how much more you're able to see on the Microsoft Surface tablet. Now, as far as graphics go, I can honestly say they look probably identical to Actually, they do look identical. If anything, certain things like this look a little bit crisper like the, um, the actual score. Um, this is not the same. Let's go ahead and see. But yeah, the overall it looks pretty much the same. I'll go ahead and hit play again. Um, see over here. Yeah, the graphics look on both a little bit washed out. That could just be the style that they're using. But let's go ahead and load a different application. So I've loaded Angry Bird Space, and right off the bat, I can tell you like Tatooine looks blurrier on the uh, Nexus 10 compared to on the surface. Now this here looks really really sharp, and this looks normal to me. Uh, so certain aspects, because Tatooine could be a graphic, so once again it's trying to blow it up or upscale it compared to something like a vector image. Let's go ahead and hit play, or uh, actually wrong one. Let's try and do this at the same time. Let's go ahead and push on one, just to kind of see. Now you can see the uh, Surface tablet loaded a bit quicker. And again, you could see the difference between where it's being cut off on this side versus this side. Now, something to note, you can see how everything is now being scaled properly. In other words, remember how I told you it would shrink down? Look at the plus, or excuse me, the pause sign compared over here. Because this is using the full 2560 by 1600 resolution, you can see how or certain elements are using that. The score is also a lot smaller. But once again, you can see how much more detail. See this rock over here? You can't see that rock over here. You can see the two rocks here and how it ends. So once again, this is something to know how you're able to see a little bit more. And that is because of the aspect ratio of this device. So here I have the Netflix app loaded and you could really appreciate the display on the Nexus 10. However, again, I must say that the display on this is really, really good. If this was an A+, this is just an A right here because I'm telling you right now, you cannot see any pixelations, but over here you could definitely tell and the 300 PPI is really stretching its legs right here and it looks really good. So I've loaded uh, both applications and I'm not going to compare both apps that's later down the road but we're going to go ahead and load a movie and kind of see how color reproduction saturation and stuff like that play out so let's be back so here I have Iron Man 2 playing and I want to show you or talk about the color reproduction on both devices now I will tell you this that both of them as far as sharpness goes look identical to me and it's very hard to tell if one is actually crisper than the other I'm not sure what resolution both of them are running. Uh, maybe you guys can leave your comments down below. I'm not sure if the Netflix app is optimized for 1080p or the Microsoft one if it's running at 1080p, but they look pretty much identical. However, there is one difference, and I could tell you is that the Microsoft Surface tablet, the color saturation seems to be a lot better compared to the Nexus 10. Now, I'm not saying that the Nexus 10 is bad. I'm just saying that the color reproduction seems to be more accurate, and that's probably due to the IPS display. Now, I know that Samsung uses the PLS display, and they claim that it's better than the IPS. Of course, this is newer technology. This is proven. 
I'll leave these or this video for you guys to look at. Once again, my own, you know, looking at the pictures, I could say that this one seems to be more accurate. I've also left the picture on Google Plus uh, yesterday, and a lot of you were commenting and saying that yes, the Surface tablet was a lot, or indeed, better than the Nexus 10. But needless to say, they're both very, very good at what they do and it's not like this is bad once again if this is an a plus this is an a minus per se when it comes to saturation and colors so i wanted to do a, sort of like a handheld mode so that way you guys can take a look and i'm doing more of an over the top view to kind of give you the uh, best view possible i'm not using the uh, tripod anymore so let's go ahead and see if maybe you guys can uh you know, once again, the pixelation on both devices would be about the same. And I'm going to go ahead and stand f back a little bit just so you guys can see um, more or less how that looks. You be the judge. I know the video playback might be different, but I'm just telling you what I see. You let me know what you see. Hopefully we get some uh, shots of people right now. Kind of see the skin tones and stuff. There it is, Tony Stark, Iron Man. That was a pretty good shot, right? What do you guys think? Nexus 10 or Surface? Tough call. Both very good, guys. Um, look at that explosion. This looks a little bit more red, but I don't know. This is just from what I'm seeing right now. So what does this all mean and which one is better? Well, that depends. See, the Nexus 10, you're gonna run into optimization problems. And that seems to be the big thing, even with the MacBook Retina display. A lot of things don't look so great because things are not optimized. So that's where, do you really go for the high PPI display? Now, don't get me wrong, the Microsoft Surface tablet, even though it has a much lower PPI compared to the Nexus 10, it doesn't mean it sucks. If you look at your laptop or most of your devices that you have at home, including your monitor, this still has a higher PPI. That's to say like your 14 inch or 13 inch notebook that has the same resolution as this sucks. So I think a lot of people have that misconception just because this has a higher PPI, it automatically wins. But unless everything was optimized to take full advantage of that high PPI, I would say you're at an equal level playing field. As a matter of fact, you might want a device that has something like this, better color reproduction, saturation. Also, one thing that I didn't show you just because you really can't see is the viewing angles and the anti-glare on this device is really, really good. Like I said, Microsoft spent a lot of money and attention to those things, whereas on this device, you get a lot more glare, the viewing angles isn't as good as the Surface. So again, depending on what your use is, if you're going to be reading a lot of books, you're definitely gonna love this device, the Nexus 10. If you're going to be viewing magazines that have been optimized for that 300 PPI, you're going to enjoy this. So in this round, I'm gonna call it a draw. And it's really on a personal level, what you feel and your experience based on the review that you're seeing now, what you prefer in, when it comes to web browsing, looking at things, how the aspect ratio is a little bit larger on this, that you can see more. So once again, I leave it up to you guys. You decide. Round two is a draw. Now we move on to round three. Things are really going to start heating up when we move on to performance. So guys, thanks again for watching. Be on the lookout for round three. And thanks again for watching. Adios.